Hi everyone, welcome to uh, Bringing On Special Halloween Podcast. And right now, my next guest is none other than my friend, you know, my brother from another mother from Georgia. And we always laugh about the fact that our voice is uh, now accent is very different you know, <laughs> from Georgia and me from Quebec. So, uh, how are you, Shane? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Yeah, our voices are a little bit different, but man, I. I love your voice, you know, and Steve's voice whenever y'all were talking and uh, we got to see each other in Savannah. Uh, <laughs> it was just awesome, man, just hearing you guys and hearing how you guys talk. It's pretty cool, man. I thought I had a southern accent, but y'all y'all have the accent uh, accent thing down pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome because it, it's cool, you know, when we, I talked to you last night, I talked to Glenn and Glenn's from Baltimore. So he has a totally different accent. And then I, oh, yeah. I I'm and, talking to Glenn's voice. Glenn's voice is like really deep too. He's got one of those, you know, he talks like that, you know, it's a deeper voice, uh, which Glenn is a cool guy. Anybody who hasn't met him. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And Glenn could be great and radio and host. Him and Susan, they're just awesome. They are, and Glenn has a voice, and it could be a great radio, uh, you know, he could make it for a living because his voice is very, like, you know, he could do it night, talk show, whatever, and talk about... Oh, for sure. <laughs> Such yeah, a cool guy, and uh, it, it's fun, you know, that through social media, that's how you met Glenn, you know, because I remember when we did the podcast, and you offered the person that would interact with us the most... Uh, a free ticket to go to your uh, investigation, you know, in Georgia. And Glenn, right. you know, you gave it to Glenn and Susan, and that, that's how you meet you met them. And to them, you know, going right. to Georgia. It was a hunt with Holzer event. It was with Alexandra Holzer. Yes. And, yeah. Um, yeah. It was. Um, it was really cool. I mean, and and like I said, once once we met Glenn and Susan, they they were pretty much a part of the family from then on out. I mean, they were just. Really cool people, um, really knowledgeable people, and they're really passionate about what they do. So, I mean, really great guests. So, if uh, you've had them on the show already, that's awesome. They're really good people. And, and you know, that's the fun thing about sometimes, you know, you meet somebody and you become like instant brotherhood. It was like that with you, like that with Mark. Uh, our villa, the same thing with Glenn and the same thing with Dave DeLee. Uh, right. Four times it happened to me in my life, you know, uh, with Steve, but ba way back, you know, we go like 20 years. But I mean, uh, with people that we met actually on Twitter and Facebook, that's so cool. Well, yeah, man. I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's more than just, you know, meeting and connect. I think there's a deeper connection. You know what I mean? I think yeah. when people are like-minded, uh, like we are uh, in a lot of ways, I think there's just a connection that's there that is it's it's meant to be. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. it sounds cliche and it sound, sounds kind of corny, but seriously, I mean, there's some people that you're just meant to connect with and, and meant to you know grow relationships with. It, it's through the same thing with uh, with, with so many people. It, it, the same thing with Bianca. You know, she's so awesome. Yeah, you know, sure. I miss her. <laughs> right. For yeah. sure. You know, and uh, the, uh, the Bianca, fun. Bianca's a, a great person too, and and you know she can get along with a brick wall. You know what I mean? She's just got <laughs> oh, yeah. one of those personalities. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, she's cool. She is. So, brother, you know, uh, since it's Halloween uh, uh, tonight, well, not tonight because we're pre-taping it, but you know it's gonna air on Halloween night. But you know, I want to know. If you could tell me maybe the creepiest place and the creepiest experience you've ever had investigating, like um, we can start with the personal experience. What if you were to uh, I don't know tell somebody that uh, never heard about that you never talked to before, and he was asking you, "Hey man, you know you, you, you're an investigator, a paranormal investigator. What is the first time or you know you realize that paranormal exists?" And that you were not necessarily scared, but you know that you realize, oh my goodness, there's we're communicating with, we don't know what how to call it, spirits, whatever energy or ghost or, but what is the one time you know you realize, holy cow, you know this is this is it. Well, there, like you know, I've had a lot of experiences throughout my life, but I think the one defining one that really set it off for me and really made it real to me was it had to be whenever we started you know originally it was spike paranormal and how we started that 
it, it was actually in a house that uh, my brother-in-law was staying in at the time. And you, you know, I've told you this story before, but uh, it, there was, you know how you can just walk into a place and immediately feel that something's not right? Oh, yeah. Well, it was, this house was, it, it embodied that feeling. It was just something about it where you would go in and something wasn't right. And there was something that was really tormenting my brother-in-law quite a bit at this location and you know we weren't a team we weren't we weren't even formed at the time we of course we were interested in the paranormal and all of that but you know nothing really came of it until we were at this place and I remember uh, the feeling that I felt um, actually we captured an EVP it was just me and him there there were no children there no no females no radio on no air conditioning on nothing like that and uh, it said mine and his names and it said that um, I'll kill you so it says Shane Brennan I'll kill you and from that EVP which which it could have been anything from you know a scare tactic of of whatever was there not necessarily saying oh they're really going to be doing that but it could have been a scare tactic trying to just you know rile us up a little bit whatever it was but I I still have that to this day, and I tell you that was one of one of the experiences that really made me look at everything differently and say, you know, I don't know if this is spirits, I don't know if it's ghosts, I don't know what it is, but I do know that it's something, and it's something that that we have for sure got to look at and investigate further, and that's pretty much what got me into. Uh, what I do now. So I, I would say that experience there is the defining moment where I really had to step back and say, all of this is real. All, all of this is real. I don't know what it is, but it's real. But brother, you know, this is a kind of experiences that, you know, that would scare, uh, that I, I would say 90% of people that read something like that happens in their, one of their first investigation, they would never <laughs> do it again. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to tell you, it shook it shook everybody that was there at the time. It shook us to the core, and we actually had to really think about it and um, weigh our options, you, you know, because we have families and all of that. And, and, of course, you think you think back to things, and you're like, okay, would this affect my family? Would this be something that would be safe to do? You know, I mean, you, you got to think about those things. Anybody that says, oh, that's... That's a bunch of crap. You don't you don't have to do that. Is you know respectfully they're wrong. I mean because you you got to think about those things because there is an unknown. Uh, there, it's, it is the unknown. So it is. you never really know exactly what you're getting into, exactly what you're getting your family into. So I think it's really important to weigh those options, and it was something that really, really shook us for a little while and it and uh it was a decision i'm glad we made the decision to do what we do now but it was a decision that was really uh a really hard decision to make but i'm glad we did and and from there we were able to help a lot of people and uh if it wasn't for that experience i don't think we would be able to help the people that we have been able to help Exactly. Exactly. That's the one thing that struck me about you, that that's all about helping other people. And I feel the same way. That's why I started doing this. And that's probably when you said, you know, like-minded people, I really appreciate the fact that it's not just about the trills and the trill seeking or, you know, just to get a good spook or make a good video or just to have like, oh my God, I'm going to post it on my YouTube channel. I'm going to have like a thousand views or whatever. It's about helping people. Oh, sorry, man. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no problem. It's, it's true. It's, it's about helping people, and, and and also, you know, when we do places like the, we did the Moon River Brewery or stuff like that, it's gifts. You know, it's like, oh my God, you know, finally we have a place where we can, like, to me, there's less pressure when I go investigate in a place like that where I pay, <laughs> and you know that I that I, I don't have any pressure. You know, I'm not trying to help anybody. I'm just trying to 
piece the puzzle together. But when we do private home investigations, you know, it's you, you don't want to make things worse for the the owners or whatever. So you really work hard to to make sure you know that when you leave, you know, things will be quiet or you won't leave them, you know, with worse activity than when you came. Right, and and you know, one thing that there is a difference between you know doing what we do and and people who are out for the thrills and and all of that stuff and 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 I understand that I understand you know wanting to be spooked and and having that adrenaline rush but you know if you're going to call yourself an investigator or a researcher or whatever you want to call yourself it's it has to be more than the thrills because there are times uh probably more more times than I got that you know, quick adrenaline rush. There are more times where it has shaken me and has done something to me that has had a lasting impact, and it's not always completely positive. I mean, you hear a lot of people say, well, it's draining. It's a draining experience. But, but I don't think people really understand what that means. It's, it's not like, oh, it, you know, It's not like me saying, oh, I've got this special ability that it just drains me to the core because I'm, I'm, I'm all that and I'm cool. And all. No, it's, it's not that. It's, it's something to where I think a lot of people that, and I, I know that you have gone through this, Dom, because you've, you've shared some stories with me, but I, I, it comes at a cost. You know what I mean? It, it's something that every time you do this sort of thing, a piece of you changes. There's something about you changes. There's, there's something that a part of you goes either with that location or something. Something happens. But it's not all about the thrills. And I've, I've dealt with um, people, clients that have really, you know, they've wanted to move from their homes that they've been at, been at for 20 years or more. They want to They want to leave this place because something is going on. They don't know what's going on. And if you go into a situation like that and you handle it as, oh, I can't wait to see how many uh, EVPs I get, or I can't wait to, to have that cool feeling that something's in the room. If you go into it like that, you will fail. And not only will you fail, but you are going to be hurting that family that's that's living there, you're going to be hurting the people that are involved because ultimately it's about getting them resolution and not just that, but whatever is there, having a resolution in, in that regard too, whether it be, you know, clearing that energy or, or whatever it is. But it, it's a task that people really, a lot of people, unfortunately, they don't take seriously and it comes at a cost. You could be affecting family You could be affecting yourself. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that go into this, man. And, and I'm glad people like you um, are passionate about this and you bring this stuff to light and share it with people. I think it's really important because it's not all fun and games, man. I mean, a lot of times I've shed tears, uh, you know, for people that, you know, I could feel their pain. I could feel their fear. And... You know, I've, I've, I wouldn't, I won't be ashamed to admit it. I've, I've shed tears, man. I've cried with people. I've, I've uh, felt their hurt and their pain, and, and it's that's not fun, man. I don't, I don't think that's a thrill. No, to me right. at all. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the same thing happened a few times. You know, I remember uh, about a year ago, uh, an investigation that took a big piece of me. I, I, I probably didn't investigate for about three months afterwards, but it was a private home, and we stayed there for two days. And it's not the kind of stuff you know we you see on YouTube. You know, we, we're there for two days because we we um I, I always a lot of people told me you know oh my God you know I smelled this or uh, I, you know the uh, I smell you know, sulfur or stuff like that. And I never truly believed it because it never happened to me. But I swear to God, that time the guy told me before the activity starts, there's that smell, that smell of sulfur. And then all hell breaks loose. And as soon as we got in the house, just before I got back in the, my car, you know, to get my gear, the team's in, on the top floor with the, the guy. He's explaining everything. I'm coming back. And then I see all hell breaking loose. 
Two members of my team are, are crying. The other one seems very panicky. The owner of the house is crying too. Uh, and then I don't realize what the hell is going on. And then the smell hit me. But it didn't uh, interfere with my emotions as much because I wasn't there when it came out. So I don't know if it, right. the power was already a little bit drained. But, you know, I, I was like, holy shit, what is that smell, you know? And then, um, yeah, it's, and it was going, it was crazy stuff, you know, we, we caught crazy, crazy stuff and we didn't want to leave because the owner was scared enough to leave us in the house alone <laughs> for, uh, until right. he hey. said, I'm not coming you know, back, of, you know? Yeah, I know, man. And you know, a lot of people are like, man, I really want to have that experience. I, but I, I don't think people, whenever they, whenever they say that, I don't think they really know what they're asking for. You know what I mean? Of course, it's great to have that validation that, that there's something there and that, that uh, you know, there's what you've been looking for for a while is actually there. But I, I don't think people really understand, you know, like I was talking about before, the cost of an experience like that. Yeah. Because like you said, it, it took you three months before you even investigated again. Oh, yeah, I was totally drained, you know, emotionally right. and physically. Right. Yeah. That's something that that's something that's a piece of you that went away, Dom. Whether you think about it or not, it is. It, it's something that a piece of a piece of you, a piece of your energy, whatever it is, it was either left there or, or something was drained from there, and you will never get that back. And I don't think people know the cost of that, but it, it's a major cost, and yeah. we don't fully understand what that necessarily means. You know, the draining thing. We don't we don't fully understand what that means. But either way, we know that there's a cost to all of it. And, it, you know, if I could say anything, people who are interested in this, that is awesome. Continue in your research. Be serious about the research. But at the same time, understand and realize the cost of it. And don't go into it just for the thrills. Go into it primarily to help people. If you do that, you will be successful if you don't go into it with helping people as your primary goal you will fail and it will come at a major cost that you you know you could never fully recover from i i'm i highly believe that i firmly believe that i agree brother and uh if i one more question before uh, you know tell me about the creepiest place or location that you've ever been in that you would be kind of not scared but that you would be like oh my god <laughs> I, I kind of hope I know the answer already but I'll let you uh, tell me your personal uh, location that really shook you up you know uh, the well, most over the, your career well I'm going to tell you man it, it, and it's going to be a cliche cliche answer but it's going to have to be and it's not going to be like creepy but the one that was impactful for me was the investigation uh that we went on at bobby mackey's oh my god because, <laughs> yes yes be, be, because that was that was something it and you know we heard a lot of stories oh demons this demons that and uh demons in the basement but it was it was a different thing for us man it was it was something that it wasn't it wasn't a negative experience that, that we've seen you know we've seen depicted on tv and all of that i mean yeah there were some very shaky mo moments but i think where i really felt the most uh energy i think one one of the main places would be bobby mackey's and some of the uh interaction that we had which was really amazing whenever we were in the basement. You, know, you remember we were sitting in the in the circle and, and the awesome Wanda K was there. And remember we said we were about to leave and uh, the K2 meters that we had, we had like three of them and three of them lit up at one time. You that, remember that? Uh, it, that? That was crazy. I just reposted the video not too long ago on my uh, YouTube channel and I, I still got goosebumps. Oh, man, you could feel my hand was frozen. You know, I could barely hold the key to my hand. And, you know, we, uh, that was crazy. We, we could feel almost as if they were saying, don't go, stay. Right, <laughs> right. And, and it, wasn't, it wasn't like a negative, sickening feeling that people would, would say sometimes they had there. It was more of like, please, we have more to say. 
for me. Exactly. But, unfor- but, but unfortunately, our time was up, but it was almost like, no, 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 we don't want you to leave. Yeah, just like you said, and it, and it, it wasn't negative for us. I, I know that other people have been there, and they've had some negative experiences, but in this case, we didn't. At all, I don't think I you don't know, think any of us really had any negative experience. You know, bro, we should go back. We should go back and do a follow up investigation because I'm oh, sure. Sure, man. I, I feel like we have some unfinished business in positive side. I remember when we caught the. Uh, uh, I had two children. It, basically, you're lucky if you get a ghost box response with two words. Uh, like I was well, talking yeah. with Brian Cano yeah. yesterday, and but when you get a full phrase like this, I had two children. And we, we were communicating with a woman that seemed to be there in the early 80s. So we're talking about, because people know the story from Ghost Adventures, but the fact is it runs deeper than that. You know, the, it, that place, you know, has been built over Native American uh, cemeteries. Uh, not, right. And uh, Native American, um, a lot of stories going back to the 1800s, earthquakes, fires, and stuff like that. And the old area, not just Bobby Mackey, right? Remember when Glenn, uh, Wanda was talking that the summer before, people got killed, you know, uh, driving from the building, you know, a motorcycle. A week before we were there, a guy was thrown off his feet in the basement. Uh, a guy that was taunting in the basement. I think the the way you also approach the investigation changed a lot of things, right? If you went out there provoking and <laughs> and wrote, talk, <laughs> we have to remember remember that that part in uh, upstairs, you know, when we were talking about. And all of the blue, you said Zach. And I said, what about Zach? And then it said douche. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I remember that. That that was that was that was hilarious. But here's the thing, here's the thing, Dom. You touched on something that is really important too. You said uh it's all about how you approach the investigation. And I think that's important because if I go up to somebody that I see, you know, here in real life, if I go up to somebody that's yelling and angry and I approach them yelling at them and I'm angry at them, I'm going to get a negative response. But if I go up to that person and say, hey, hey, what's going on? Let's, let's calm down and tell me what's going on. And I'm calm and I'm at a calm level, I will get a different response. That person, nine times out of ten, will calm down and will express themselves more. So I think it's really important what you said is all about how you approach things. If you approach things in a calm way and in a helpful way, you're wanting to understand. I think the whole dynamic of everything that goes on during that time will be more of a positive experience. It doesn't always happen that way, but like I said, nine times out of ten... It does. It really, it like when we were at uh, Moon River Brewery in the basement, you know, and we found out later on, remember when I called you about a month after that, and I realized that we caught, uh, shot by a doctor, and we were standing in the exact right. spot where a guy named James Stark was killed by a doctor playing poker, and the name that we thought back then was Wayne, sounds a lot like James, right? Yes, yes, and man, whenever you called me and told me that, that was another shaking moment for me. That that was really cool because I remember that uh, in depth. That that was one, that was one of the uh, main times at Moon River. That was one of the main experiences that we had there. If you think about it, I mean, it was pretty quiet up until that point. Yes. And once once we had that interaction, everything changed. And, and that was that was. It, I think it was just that moment there was the reason why we were there. That that. That moment was to to have that little piece of the puzzle was probably the whole reason why we were supposed to be there to begin with. And I remember so, that I was a little bit more uh, on edge than usual. I was a little bit more aggressive. You even told me I was walking around and I was more on edge. And you were like, "Dom, you know, yeah. just sit." And uh, you felt the energy too. It felt like um, I would say, you know, Bobby Mackey. We kind of expected to get scratched and pushed and stuff like that. And it was totally positive, but when we were at Moon River, I didn't really expect it to be uh, negative in a way. And I'm not saying it was a negative spirit, but I felt anger and I felt uh, aggression in the basement. So uh, yeah, it, it kind of something happened there. You know, if something happened that was that was relating to that. Exactly. So, you know, somebody was shot there. You know what I mean? So I mean, of course, you're going to feel that type of energy. 
and we, we, we were there without knowing that. That's the cool part about it, because we didn't know. We, we found out afterwards, and then we said, oh my God, yeah, I remember in the basement we got something, and then we pieced the puzzle. That's the funniest thing ever when you do an investigation. Or when we were, <laughs> I remember with Stephen Moundsville Penitentiary, and we were doing an EVP session besides the uh, electric chair, and we caught a name. And the name of the guy was, uh, I think it was B Bill, but I'm not sure, you know, but I remember hearing the name like three times. And when we finished the investigation, we're back inside the small mu museum and you see the seven names of people that were electrocuted in the chair. And the third name was the name of the guy we heard. And that was the guy that was, you know, that's disgusting, but he was, uh, when they, they, actually it actually him. it didn't kill him so they pour more water enough that he, he, he caught on fire so he actually didn't die yeah. electrocuted he died bur he, he burned alive you know so that's a terrible thing and it was the name of the guy so i'm not saying we communicated with him but it seemed like a disparate voice so you go like oh my goodness i didn't know that if i had known you know i would have asked more more questions but at the same time maybe i, I would have been influenced to think that it sounded like the name that we heard so there goes the uh that could be for a whole other podcast but i mean when you go in knowing everything and when you go blind i, I mean you know there's positives of both you know you, if you know everything you know you're going to be influenced if you don't know anything then you're going to miss out when you interact with uh the spirits but you can always go back right so that's the the, the fun part about it and that that's what investigating is all about, Dom. I mean, it really is. I mean, if you see a police investigator, or FBI investigator, okay, if they go in knowing every minute detail about everything, then they don't have a job. Exactly. I mean, think about it. If, if they could just tell somebody, hey, I know all of this information already, then they don't have a job. So I think, I think going into it not knowing anything and then piecing the puzzle together is why people who call themselves paranormal investigators, that's why they exist. It's basically trying to find out what's unknown and kind of make it known. Uh, that's pretty much why we exist. Exactly. About it. I mean, we're there. Give a to voice know, to the voiceless. To life, things <laughs> that are unknown. Exactly. And give a voice to the voiceless. And actually, you know, right. when you think about it, you know, it's the coolest thing ever because we're dealing with the biggest question that every human being on earth had as that for uh, ma millions of years you know what happens after we die so this is a f nobody can be like oh i i, I don't want to know that answer everybody would love to know you know but th the thing is you know we're dealing with what it is we can put names on it like we can call it spirits energy or whatever but the thing is we know there's something out there you know, we, right. we've we experienced that. So it, it just makes me want to go back. And it, it, like, there's some locations I've been like 20 times. And every time has been a different experience. So we could go back tomorrow to Bobby Mackey and be scratched, you know, <laughs> or push down the right. stairs. Right. Yeah, it could you know? be a completely different experience. But it could all be pieced together. I, I truly believe this. It could all be pieced together from the original time we were there. I mean... Those, if we had an experience like that the second time around, we can still probably piece it together onto why all of that stuff was happening to us. Exactly. All it takes, all it takes, is us being quiet and listening and trying to understand instead of just going in there being, "Hey, demons, where are you at?" <laughs> like, 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 like we've seen other people do. You know what I mean? Oh it's my goodness! Not, it's not the way to go it is never the way to go to do it that way ever uh, uh, and yeah. when, when i first started out man and and you know uh, i've told you this whenever i first started out i was i was that little douchebag i was a lot like that until i learned and you have to learn the hard way sometimes but until i learned i was that little douchebag that did stuff like that and and then I, I learned, okay, it's not it's not about this at all. I'm not getting anywhere. The only thing I'm doing is riling up something that I have no idea what it's about. So why am I being so irresponsible in doing things this way? And it was a growing process. And then from that, you know, I still have a lot to learn, but from that I've learned to be a lot more respectful. You be respectful no matter what you hear, what stories you hear, and you're always going to come out ahead. Always. You know, brother, I... Love talking to you, you know. Uh, I, I, we got to do another podcast soon, brother. You know, and, and then we could go 
for hours on end because we can talk about the paranormal. We can talk about your uh, movies that you're now doing, and and there's so much stuff we get, could we could. You know what I'd love to do? Ask paranormal. Half the movies and also a part of about Walking Dead because we're both giant, gigantic fans of Walking Dead, and you're going to uh, Stalker Cup, so I'm very jealous. I want to go to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're going to the Walker Stalker Con this weekend. Wow, it's, it's going to be fun. But you know, you know, you know, Dom, I always, I always have time for you, man. You are a brother to me. You, Steve, MJ is like a sister. I mean, I always make time for you guys. Y'all are part of my family. So same here, brother. Time, so man. Let, let, let's let's chat in a few weeks and talk. You, you could tell me about your experiences. You know at uh, at you know with the Walking Dead cast and uh, you know I, I spoiler alert, but. I cried Sunday. I have to admit, when Glenn died and oh, Abraham died, I was yeah. devastated. <laughs> oh yeah, man! It, it was it was uh, it was an episode that yeah, it'll go down in history. I think it's going to change the whole dynamic of the show. That's for sure. And, and the, the, yeah, we can talk about that. We can yeah. talk about that. Well, that, uh, that'd be a great podcast, podcast, you know, because who doesn't love The Walking Dead? You know, it's kind of like uh, the most popular show on television history. You know, it's absolutely incredible. And uh, the last the last one was very, very hard. You know, it doesn't get more uh, graphic than that and more violent. But at the same time, you know, it's done in a way that it tells a story. It's not just free violence. You know, it's to tell a story. That's why I love it. Right, right. It tells a story, and, and that's what it's all about. I mean, it's it's good TV, man. It's just plain and simple. It's good TV. You're right, brother. So, uh, all right, thanks again for your time, Shane. Uh, have fun this weekend. Take a lot of pictures. And if you see Glenn, tell him, you know, to me, he's always going to be the heart of the show. Oh, I definitely will, man. If I can get an autograph for you, I'll do it. Oh, that'd be uh, awesome. You know, I really love Stephen Young. I love uh, Michael Cutlets, you know, Abraham, you know. Uh, what a way to go, right? Saying, you know, uh, how do you uh, say it? Suck my uh, my nuts or something like that? Nuts. Suck my nuts. That's... <laughs> <laughs> and, and did you see the little peace sign that he did to Sasha just before he got he get he gets killed? Yes, I did. It, it was, and you know, it was something that he decided to do on his own. He kind of he kind of improv and did it, so, which I think is phenomenal, man. That, that's a true artist right there doing something like that. Oh, he is. He's a great actor. And I I, pre I appreciate you having me on the show, Dom. I really do, man. All right, brother. Take care. So have fun this weekend. All right, I will, man. Take care, bro. Have a good one, buddy. You too, bye. Bye-bye.